I think I'm going to bring this one to me. Yeah. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, those of you in this High Park area, Lower West Village. We are here from Grace Missionary Baptist Church. And we're here to share some good news yes, with you. And that is the good news of the good of uh, good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again from the grave on the third day for our justification. That is the good news. We're living in an age, a time when all we hear is bad news, all kinds of bad news, whether it's in your news feeds. Uh, social media feeds, Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, you name it. All kinds of bad news, friends. But we're here to share some good news. Now I'd like to read a portion of Scripture from Isaiah chapter 52 right through Isaiah 53. It's a prophecy made 700 years prior to the advent, the first advent of the Lord Jesus Christ around, I would say, 2700 B.C. And this is what the scripture says, starting in verse 13 of Isaiah 52. And it says this, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations, the kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which he had not heard shall they consider. Over to verse 1 of Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, yet no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. No. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, amen? He was bruised for our iniquities, amen? The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, amen? All we like sheep, and that's you here, my friends, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's religion. That's atheism. That's modernism, all of that. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. 
Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul in the death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So once again, I want to repeat, dear friends, I have some good news to share with you. This is news that will bring hope to your soul if it is received with a ready and willing heart. Again, when we look through the pages of our newspapers, or when we open up our news feeds, Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, and so on, it doesn't matter. Even the newspapers, it doesn't matter. We are indeed presented with a bleak picture. We are presented with a world that is in chaos and seemingly without hope. Perhaps this is you. We are presented with a world that seeks solutions to its problems that are based on the futile, humanistic reasoning of man, which is contrary to that of God. This only serves to create more problems than it seeks to solve. The daily news that we read and hear of does indeed paint a bleak picture. We live in a world that is in despair, a world that, se that is seemingly without hope, a world that is cursed. Yes, it is. All we hear is bad news and more bad news. Yeah. But once again, allow me to reiterate to you that I have some good news to share with you. Some really good news. And this is news that you need to hear. You can tell me to turn this volume down, but friends, the time is short and Jesus is coming. This is news that you need to hear. For yes it is, for Jesus said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Are you listening? Do you have ears to hear? And this is news that will give you hope. Yes, it will give you hope. Hope not only in this life here on earth, but in life, in the life here to come after we breathe our last. This is news that I'm preaching to you today, my friends. And it is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that I personally received on March the 22nd of 2005. The gospel that changed my life forever. And you, you, it can you said, change you yours. God, right? You're calling it God. can God transform God you. I want to declare on you the gospel. Bridge. How that Christ died right. for our God, sins God according right. to the scriptures. The and that he was buried. And that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Bridge. What's this about? Oh, now, this is the bridge. We want to cross this bridge, right? Ago, yeah. The bridge of the cross. The prophet Isaiah prophesied the world is of a deliverer oh, to come. I'm, the oh, Messiah. There, the Christ. Right? The anointed the one. Cross, right? The one oh, who would yeah. deal Christ. with man's yeah, chief problem. Yeah, sin. Yeah. Look at the back. For the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This prophecy spoken of by the prophet Isaiah was fulfilled in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was God Almighty, manifest in the flesh 2,000 years ago. In other words, he was fully God, God Almighty, and fully when he man. That trumpet, this is be known louder. theologically as the hypostatic the end, right? union. The Lord Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago, and he will come again one day to rule and reign on this earth as the blessed King of Kings and Lord of Lords. No, we're going to be preaching, my man. Hear the the blessed king. For, in Excuse Isaiah 9, me. verses... Excuse me, you are too loud. The Lord's going to be even louder when he exactly. blows the trumpet. Fine, Isaiah chapter 9, verses Stop. 6 and 7, the Bible not, says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government He's shall be back. upon He's his shoulder, and his name shall be called okay. Wonderful oh, Counselor, the Mighty God. I'm not going to stop, ma'am. No, no, no. I have down. freedom. No, the message. I have yeah, yeah. Too, and I don't need to listen if, to if, you. If you like no, the message, it's a free country. It's a free country, ma'am. I know my rights, and I have rights to preach. Everybody in this neighborhood. So you can speak for everybody. Stop the microphone and talk. So you basically you're telling me to stop my freedom. The okay, we're talking then. That's do you want to talk about the gospel? The okay, do you want to talk? We can Kill talk about Jesus. Oh, I'm not going to obey you. Someone's telling us to breach. What? Stop. I'm not going to. Let them breach. Let them breach. I'm not going to stop. You can preach, not on the microphone. Someone's so, saying, let them okay, okay, wait, let me just. Excuse me. So I can. Let, right. No, let me speak now. No, no, you don't I don't have, have the right, right to preach the gospel. I have the right. You can speak the gospel. Is it illegal? I know it inside out. Is it illegal? 
I know the gospel. Okay. I know the gospel. Have you received so the gospel? Yes, yes, I have. And when did you receive the gospel? I'm a Catholic. No, you haven't received the gospel. Oh, There's another know. gospel. So now you're just a racist. No, I'm not. Racist. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. Continue on. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Amen, Counselor, Amen, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The Lord Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago, and he's coming again, friends. He came 2,000 years ago to die for the sins of mankind, to die in our place so that we might live. But one day he's coming again to rule as the blessed King of kings and Lord of lords. He's going to rule with a rod of iron, friends. So Jesus Christ will come again to rule and reign. Again, however, 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ came not as the King of glory, but as a suffering servant to die for the sins of mankind. The Lord Jesus Christ suffered a horrible death to pay sin's penalty. For the Bible says in Romans 6 and verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. Death means separation. Because of sin, it is a three-fold separation. It is separation of our soul and spirit from our body when we leave this earth. It is separation from God due to our sins. For the Bible says that all of us outside of Jesus Christ, apart from the gospel, are dead in trespasses and sins. We are spiritually dead right now outside of Jesus Christ. Yep. I'm okay. The you bridge. Dead? Going across the bridge. And it speaks of eternal separation in the lake of fire. Well, the Bible says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where the Bible says there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Where the Bible says that the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Hell is a place, friends, and you do not want to go there. The Lord Jesus Christ came to keep you out of hell. Now I want to get back to our text in Isaiah chapter 53. My first point here is the story of the cross. The story of the cross. For Isaiah 51 and 53 and verse 1 says this, Who hath believed our report? Who hath believed our report? This report or hearing speaks of the blessed gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, and that the, is simply well, is that he died for Jesus our sins Christ, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried no and that he rose sins, again right? from the grave on Jesus. the third day according to the scriptures. Exactly. Praise the Lord. The gospel yeah. is yeah. a report yeah. of the perfect love, oh, amen. Amen. grace, the and mercy of God yeah, found in the Lord Jesus people Christ. People are complaining about the volume, but God will be even louder when he blows that trumpet. It is a report of Jesus right? Christ himself, his person, exactly. his offices, his obedience, oh, his Praise sufferings, and his death. It is the wonderful, wonderful report of the free and full salvation available to all by Him and through Him. The gospel is a true and faithful report, a report that promises good news indeed, and a report that God Almighty has commanded all to believe, and a report that God has commanded all to believe, for Jesus said this, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Friends, I'm calling you to repentance right now. Time is short and Jesus is coming. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Yet not all have believed the gospel, and that is true. Some of you here have not believed the gospel. Some of you are resisting it, friends. But it is good news. That's what the gospel means. Amen. Not all have believed this wonderful report that I'm preaching to you. For the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 10 and verse 16 that they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, the Lord who hath, Lord, who hath believed our report. You see, many have heard the report. 
Many have heard the glad tidings of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many have heard the hope and the life that it brings, yet it falls on deaf ears. I perceive right now it is falling on deaf ears. Friends, we are preaching this with love because there is hope in the gospel. Amen. There is no hope in your religion. There's no hope in philosophy. There's no hope in whatever worldview that you hold to. And there's certainly no hope in this world. It is only through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that you can find hope and ultimately that you can find life, life eternal. Amen. You see, when I look around here, all I see is indifference and apathy when it comes to pondering spiritual realities. To many, and this is you, the condition of your soul is of no concern. You are too comfortable today. People are too comfortable today and are lulled into a false sense of security. Amen. It's a mentality that says, I'm all right, Jack. As long as I have my Facebook, as long as I have my Instagram, as long as I have my Twitter, as long as I have my smart devices, as long as I have Netflix and so on, I don't need anything else. I'm all right, Jack. You see, friends, personal peace and affluence is the order of the day. The suffering of others means nothing to us. Why? Because it does not directly affect us. It's all theoretical. When I look around, I see a society that is decadent and degenerate. That's where we are today. Everything that could possibly satiate man's sinful desires and man's sinful lusts is readily available to us. Pornography is rampant and conveniently accessible at our fingertips on our smart devices. Marijuana has been legalized for five years now. It is sorcery. It is witchcraft, according to the Word of God. And it is what will deceive the nations of this world. Amen. We can now buy beer at Walmart and other establishments. Friends, we are a society that is going down, down, and down. We have turned our back on God and His Word and have become morally bankrupt. Amen. We have lost our moral compass. People can no longer discern between what is right and what is wrong. What is evil is now considered good and good evil. And the prophet Isaiah spoke of this when he proclaimed these words, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We're, that's where we are today, friends. To the liberal mind of today, and I suspect this is you here, the murder of unborn babies through, the abor through abortion is considered a woman's right to do what she wants with her own body without ever considering the right of that little child inside of her. And yes, it is a child. Woe unto them that call evil good. Amen. Sodomy! And same-sex marriage has been legalized in this country, as well as euthanasia. The gender identity and LGBTQ plus agenda has been fostered upon our children as some kind of virtue in our government schools and even through our government itself, without ever giving consideration for two opposing views. Woe unto them that call evil good. You've got little, you've got some transgender, and we love them. If this is you, we love you. Thank you. Some man dressed like a clown, wearing a wig, looking like a whore, reading stories to five-year-olds, dancing provocatively, sexually provocatively in front of these children, and you're okay with that? Woe unto them that call evil good. Amen, amen. The mindset of our young ones is being transformed right before our eyes. God is no longer in the equation. It's as if he doesn't exist, but friends, he does. Okay. 
Yeah. And he is long suffering. I don't like hate speech. It's not hate speech. It's love. It's love. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's not hate speech. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's not hate speech. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. He called you his friends. That is not hate speech. I'm, I'm all for freedom of speech. Jesus. No, we're not all one in Christ Jesus. No, we're not. No, we're not. You don't know the no, we're not. You don't know the Bible. If you think everybody is in Christ Jesus, what are you doing preaching the gospel, my friend? We're, what are you doing for Christ? We're out here. Loving my neighbor is warning them from the judgment to come. Loving my neighbor is preaching the gospel. Loving my neighbor is telling, telling them that outside of the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. What are you doing for God? Friends, even those that pose as Christians, like that woman, the devils are in them. Friends, I'm all for freedom of speech. I'm all for freedom of expression. I'm all for freedom of prerogative. But this does not mean that I must affirm your lifestyle or worldview. Absolutely not. Again, we are going downhill at break breakneck speed. And it's only a matter of time before we incur God's judgment upon our nation. In fact, I believe that judgment is here already. Can I talk to you? So sure. For David when said in Psalm 9 and verse 17, yeah. the Jewish. wicked okay. shall be turned so into hell like, and all really the nations that forget God. Easter, like we are a nation that has become amoral, not even God immoral, amoral and has Cartoon, forgotten God. Like we are a nation that's on its Easter, way like to hell. Mm -hmm. and, and the only one that could save us is the I Lord Jesus Christ, the suffering him. servant, the Holy One of Israel that was prophesied the, of 2,700 years like ago the by the prophet Isaiah. Jesus died for people's Who sins. Who hath believed so our then, report? Like, people, in general, I want us to consider this phrase. Who hath believed our report? Then as long as the Jewish people in Jesus' day rejected you know, this report. They the rejected thing. the gospel. And then, and then despite the, and say, despite the fact so that sorry. Jesus, God Wrong Almighty in flesh, no, no. performed well, many miracles like, right in like, front oh, of their eyes. Now you're, you're good now. You, you said, you said no to Jesus. You said sure, you believe in Jesus, you like? and now you're you're still going to go to heaven. And I was like, oh, no, we're against we're against that. Like That would be antinomianism, right? Anti-law. We believe that we're actually changed by uh, the regeneration where we're born again. When we, when we believe on the Lord Jesus, we're actually born again of the Spirit. And so now we actually fulfill the law because we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. So we're, we're to walk after the Spirit and in righteousness. So people, they're, they're turning uh, grace into lasciviousness. They're, they're using uh, grace uh, as a license for sin. Scripture says not to do that. But like, but like, what, but, but like, what if right somebody now. does a crime? Okay, what, what, Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray like, for my dear Jesus, friend here, so William. Isn't Whatever his need is right now, like, Lord, I pray that thou like would not born again, If it is salvation, right? Lord, if I pray not, for that. Not even saying, like going well, this back is a gospel message, and we are preaching again, with love, like, Lord. I know there's would, some things that are hard to hear. Does somebody think if they do a crime must and they be pray heard, to Jesus that they will still go thou to heaven? Well, it's kind of premeditated. It's like they're, um, pray, they're, they're, they're sort of tempting the Lord, right? That's kind of vanity. They're saying, like, Lord, I know that I'm going to do this crime, and you'll forgive me, so I'm just going to do it, right? That's not something that a truly born-again person would actually do. Oh. Take care, take care. Brother. Hey, brother, how you doing? Yeah, I was preaching you. earlier. Yeah? Yeah. I heard it. I thought, I thought that it was you. Yeah, 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 I was going before, and then Fortunately, he came on. We've got some resistance here, right? Anybody, Sometimes uh, out in, like, in Scarborough. Don't. Not, not so much a resistance, but here, people are trying to shut it down. What's your name? They're complaining about the, Nicholas, Nicholas, complaining about the volume. It's like the trump is going to be even louder. I'm not saying that's you. So take that up with the Lord. That's why. This is the spot to preach, though, honestly. That's why. It seems like it, Yeah, we have some positive responses, though. Yeah. My name is uh, Pastor Jeff, by the way. Oh, yeah. Were yeah. yeah. you running yeah. by or where you Yeah, I just came to the coffee. Oh, nice. I went online to see how. Like, yeah, 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 for it. I'll, I'll see describe. when I come back because I might be street preaching, so but I'll come by at some point. Children. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that was epic over here. You guys. Yeah. <laughs> and I was upset. And I was just saying, I was upset at the end of it because it, it made it look like. The message was that people can do crimes. Antinomia. And then, right. and, then, yeah. and then after the crime, just say, Jesus, I'm sorry I did the crime. I feel bad. And then yeah, they're just like, yeah. they're just, and then it's like, oh, it's okay. You did the crime. It, you said it's sorry. A you're you're still going yeah. to heaven. And I'm like, that does not teach people to take 
responsibility yeah. for their actions. It doesn't deter Well, it makes crime. sense. Yeah, absolutely. So is By that, the way, can I share something? What's yeah. your name again? Allison. Allison. My name is Pastor Jeffrey. I'm actually Jewish who was born again and received, okay. received that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. My father served in the Six Day War in 1967. Mm -hmm. He accepted Jesus back in 2007, two years after me. So. I have Jewish family. Yeah, yeah. All of them. Have, Listen, I know people that ha that yeah. I know different people who have said to me at yeah. different years. Even like yeah. yesterday, two yeah. people were like, "Jesus has saved me." Yeah. They're mm. like, "I I had a health problem, but, yeah. and Jesus." It, like, it's not even that though. It's not even your health. It's really the, your soul. Like Jews were taught uh -huh. that he's not uh -huh. the Messiah. It's not that Jews don't believe he existed. Oh, Oh, yeah. I, I just hope it doesn't give the the lesson that like people could do crimes yeah, well, and, the just thing, pray and then it's all unfortunately too many unfortunately too many get that can I share some yeah, yeah, we're, like, we're against like, that like, that's one of my huge that? problems with can the so-called Christians would you, would you allow that a lot? well it's a huge problem I, I, I asked that with myself Be dealing with that it's probably going to rain on your electronics by the way yeah well I think I might give it a close anyway tonight but like it yeah, let's. I want to share some scripture to that event because Jesus is the the King of the Jews, right? He's the, yeah. the Jews are are the chosen people, but Jesus is the prophesied Messiah. Yeah. So here it says, 50, uh, 53. in Romans, sorry, five. I want to kind of say we are. It is going to rain by the looks of things. Maybe I can put. Maybe we can probably hide under there. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to blast yeah. down yeah. in a second. Sorry, that's where am I here? I want to get to it quickly before. Uh, here it is. Okay. Uh oh, uh oh, it's yeah. raining, it's oh. raining. Go. It's okay. Do you have cover? Yeah, we do over here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we love. Uh, yeah, I'm not too concerned. Everyone, I have a cover for the electronics. But the, the Bible which teaches that. Um, I want to share that. That would with be you. one of the the fruits of the flesh, right? So we have this a little bag here. So in, in terms of um, the homosexual yeah. practice, right? We can go over there. That would be I want to share that because other, it deals with what um, you're speaking that wouldn't of. be part of God's plan or, or order. Um, but it's, it's one sin of, uh, yeah. of many others. Well, the problem is it's antinomianism. You're saved by grace. Well, well, well his main thing well, is his concern is the, um, the Apostle Paul deals uh, with that. transgender that like, uh, to hell every story time you hour with like children. Like, well, the thing um, is, right? A lot of people think yeah, that you're that, saved that's by grace. God gives you the strength. Yeah, well, that's the worst concern. The I mean, there was one in, yeah. in Vancouver. Because we, we believe in liberty of conscience, so we believe everyone has freedom to do okay, so what, what they do 